the Thursday Murder Club Summary and Study Guide. Thanks for exploring the Super Summary Study Guide of the Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. LA Cutting Edge Option in contrast to Spark Notes and Cliff's Notes, Super Summary offers excellent review directs that element nitty-gritty section synopses and examination of significant subjects, characters, statements, and paper points. Outline The Thursday Murder Club is a secret fiction novel centered around a homicide at a retirement home called Cooper's Pursue. It was composed by Richard Osman in 2020 and distributed by Penguin. Osman is an English TV program maker, and the pick style of story mirrors this in the novel. The parts are much of the time passed on cliffhangers and changed to follow various characters as a network show would while gathering a few plot strings together. The clever switches back and forth between a first individual story told through the viewpoint of the hero Joyce and her journal passages, and a third individual story zeroing in on every one of the characters. The story follows Joyce and her companions as they endeavor to settle a progression of murders occurring at Cooper's Pursue. Together, the gathering works with the police and demonstrates their value by hustling to settle the killings before the investigators allocated the case due. Plot Synopsis The story opens with Joyce's journal passage, in which she is talking about an old homicide case with Elizabeth. During this collaboration, Joyce is welcome to turn out to be essential for the Thursday Murder Club facilitated in the jigsaw room with Elizabeth, Ron, and Ibrahim, there was once another part, the gathering's prime supporter, Penny, notwithstanding, she is sick and in a state of extreme lethargy in Cooper's Pursue's nearby medical clinic, Willows. There is strain at Cooper's Pursue over the new advancement being arranged by Ian Ventham, which will include the destruction of the nursery of timeless rest, the burial ground appended to the congregation. The issue brings to town individuals who need to protect the land, like Dad Matthew. In any case, Ian is preceding the development. He needs to cut Tony, his colleague, out of the arrangement, and does as such inside the initial not many parts while sitting outside. Ron and his child Jason, alongside Joyce, are observer to Tony and Ian having what resembles a conflict in the parking garage. Soon thereafter, Tony is killed, and a photo of three men is left close to the body, Tony, Ron's child Jason, and a man named Bobby. Elizabeth visits her companion Penny frequently, with Penny's significant other John sitting unobtrusively in the room, consistently there with his better half. She goes over the subtleties of the cases, not certain on the off chance that her companion can hear her, yet she generally tries to proceed to give her updates all through the story. Joyce and Elizabeth take the Cooper's pursuit transport into town, where Elizabeth imagines that her sack has been taken yet she will just address a female official to give the report. When inside, PC Donna de Freitas comes to address them, which was Elizabeth's arrangement. Elizabeth lets Donna know that assuming she consents to let them in on some data, that she will ensure Donna gets put onto the group covering Tony's homicide. In the meantime, Ibrahim and Ron stunt one of Donna's bosses, Chris, into believing that Ron is going feeble in his advanced age, and he acts terrified of the police when Chris comes to meet with him. Ibrahim recommends that Donna be placed looking into it to cause the inhabitants to feel more great, and Chris concurs. While this all going on, Father Matthew has gone to visit Ian to request that he rethink moving the graves of the nuns, yet the man rejects. Father Matthew leaves subsequent to promising to make it as troublesome as feasible for Ian to proceed his arrangements. Joyce and Elizabeth meet with Joyce's girl Joanna to investigate Ian's monetary records to see what sort of shape his organizations were in, and it just so happens, they are doing quite well. Ian made over £12.25 million from the passing of Tony. Joyce draws nearer with a person Bernard, a single man who invests the vast majority of his energy at the highest point of the slope close to the graveyard, a spot he had affectionate recollections of with his late spouse. At the point when Chris and Donna drop by, Elizabeth gives them the blue envelope comprising of Ian's monetary records. Right now, Jason appears, and Chris asks the ex-fighter outside for a fan photograph, under the trick of asking him for what good reason he would be in the photograph left at the location of the crime, be that as it may, before he leaves, he hits on Donna by giving her his number and asking her to message him the photograph she took of Chris and him. The inhabitants get gotten up mid one morning when Ian has sent laborers to start the destruction of the nursery of everlasting rest. A few of the Thursday Murder Club individuals, alongside Bernard and others, take up posts before the doors as a type of descent. 
Ian calls Chris and Donna to come handle what is going on. During this, one of Ian's workers for hire Bogdan finds a skeleton put into a grave on top of another casket holding a skeleton. Somewhere near the doors and the gathering of protesters, Father Matthew gets into a contention with Ian before the two men tumble to the ground in a fight, Ian is pulled off by a few of different men there and told by Chris to leave. Before Ian can get into his truck, he tumbles to the ground dead, having been harmed by an injection of the medication fentanyl. The Thursday Murder Club goes over the rundown of individuals that were there to limit it down to 30 possible names, themselves included, that could be a suspect in Ian's homicide. Bogdan goes to address Elizabeth at her home and has her meet him at the graveyard to show her the skeleton he found. She likewise concurs that it is ideal in the event that they stay quiet about it for the present. At last, Elizabeth welcomes Donna and Chris over so they can see the homicide club all that they found out about the third expected murder to have occurred at Cooper's Pursue. Soon thereafter, Elizabeth goes on Joyce on an outing into Folkestone to visit a bloom shop and bistro, which is where she had the option to find Bobby, presently going under the name Peter. Elizabeth consents to stay quiet assuming he returns to town to tell police all that he told her. While glancing through photos from a long time back at the home of engineer Gordon Playfair, Elizabeth and Joyce find a picture of Matthew when he was more youthful, in the congregation during a get-together. Subsequent to talking with him and getting reality, Elizabeth has Matthew retell it for the others and the officials, Matthew subtleties the time he spent at the congregation, where he fell head over heels for a sister named Maggie and they wanted to take off together. One night when she was intended to meet him, he found that she had committed suicide in the sanctuary since she was pregnant and disgraced by the head sister. The main way he might have her covered in the congregation grounds was assuming that he consented to strip himself of his title and leave until the end of time. It is the reason he returned. In the interim, Jason utilizes the dating application Kindling to get a date with Karen Playfair, Gordon's girl. He blames her for being the killer however is immediately refuted. While examining things with Ron later, Karen sees a picture of somebody that lived there a long time back. The picture is of John, Penny's better half, and the Thursday murder club assembles prior to going to Penny's space to stand up to him. John carefully describes a man he killed quite a while back in a demonstration of help self-destruction, prior to covering him in a grave in the burial ground. Elizabeth rapidly challenges him on his blustering and says that she realizes he is really covering for Penny, who had assumed control over equity by killing a homicide suspect who was never dealt with. John concedes that Penny simply admitted to her wrongdoings during her dementia, and he killed Ian to stop the improvement project that would have uncovered the body. The clever envelops with the last two parts when Stephen, Elizabeth's better half, gets an admission out of Bogdan. He concedes to having killed Tony, on the grounds that quite a while in the past Tony had requested somebody to kill one of Bogdan's companions, a taxi driver who covered a little fellow. The story closes with a last section from Joyce, who expresses that she accepts Bogdan was the one to kill Tony, despite the fact that he was never charged for it, before she passes on to go see the Thursday Murder Club for one more gathering in the Jigsaw Room.